In this video, we'll look at a weak acid equilibrium question. This is an example of an AP chemistry free response question. Now this one is a little bit longer because I wanted to get some extra stuff in here, but it's still excellent preparation. So just as a reminder, you can get all sorts of resources for AP chemistry here at my website. Okay, so let's get started. Formic acid reacts with water according to the following equation. This is formic acid, and the equation gives us the reaction for the ionization of formic acid in water, and we get the Ka, or acid dissociation constant, of formic acid. Okay, now we know that formic acid is a weak acid because it doesn't fully ionize. Instead, the products and the reactants are in equilibrium with each other. Okay? Now, there are three parts to this question. We'll go through them one at a time, but before we start, remember that different parts of the AP free response question sometimes depend on each other. Okay, so we'll start here with part A. Write the equilibrium constant expression, Ka, for formic acid. Equilibrium is a super common topic on the free response section. So many questions begin by asking you to write the equilibrium expression, K. For weak acid, like formic acid here, the K is the acid dissociation constant expression, or Ka. Okay, so for any weak acid that dissociates according to this equation, the equilibrium expression will be based on this setup. Let's take a look at the parts here. Okay, now, remember that H2O is a liquid, so it doesn't appear in the equilibrium expression. And the AP exam actually gives you this Ka formula, this sort of general setup on the equations page, and it also gives you the Kb expression for base questions too. Okay, now, there's a discrepancy to point out here. Note that in this equation and in this expression, we're just using H+. Plus. But the equation up here has H3O+, plus, which is hydronium. You should remember that these are just different ways of expressing the same thing, okay? Hydronium ion is essentially represented here by H plus. You'll see both of these on the AP exam, and you'll see uh, uh, sort of them to going moving back and forth between hydronium and H plus. So you don't want to get confused. These are essentially interchangeable. Okay, so here is our Ka expression for formic acid. Okay, our Ka equals the concentration of hydronium or H plus times the concentration of the formate ion. Okay, the formate ion here is what is A minus, right here. So that's formate, A minus. And then finally, this is divided by the concentration of formic acid, which is our HA. Okay, so this is our acid dissociation constant expression. And if you know a little bit about the AP exam, or even if you just have done weak acid equilibrium problems like this in the past, you know that we're probably going to be using this to do some more calculations down the road. Okay? We're going to keep it here for just that reason, and we'll move on to part B. Okay. Calculate the pH of a 0.12 molar aqueous solution of formic acid. Okay. Now, the pH, that's what we have to calculate, is the negative log of the hydrogen ion or the hydronium ion concentration. If you forgot this equation, it's right there on the equation sheet. Okay, so to get the pH, we have to figure out the H plus concentration here. And just to make things easier, we'll just call it H plus or hydrogen from now on. Now remember, formic acid is a weak acid. Okay, so if we start with the concentration of 0.15 molar, only some of that is going to ionize to make H+. Okay, not all of it, just some of it. So, to find the concentration for these chemical species at equilibrium, we're going to use an 
ICE table. This includes all of the relevant participants in our equilibrium expression, and it's going to tell us how many of each we have when this equation, when this formula, when this when this uh, when this reaction reaches equilibrium. Okay, so ICE stands for initial change and equilibrium. The AP exam loves ICE tables, so make sure you understand the manipulations that we're going to be doing here. Okay, so when we set up uh, when we set up a table like this we can then start putting in the different entries here. We'll start with the initial concentrations. Okay, first, the initial concentration of formic acid. Well, that's given to us in the problem, 0 0.15 molar. Now, we assume that before we reach equilibrium, initially, H plus and formate are gonna be zero because we're starting just with this the formic acid on the left side, okay? Now, as this reaction reaches equilibrium, what are the changes that are going to take place here? Okay, well, the amount of formic acid is going to decrease by x. It's going to decrease by some amount because it is turning in to these products. Okay, so We'll do minus x here. That's the amount that the formate is going to decrease. And then, because the H plus and the formate started at zero, these concentrations had to increase to reach equilibrium. So if we look at the stoichiometry of the reaction, we can see that every one molecule of formic acid dissociates to form one H plus and one formate. All right, that's a one to one to one stoichiometric ratio. Okay, so if this goes down by x, this is going to go up by x, and this is also going to go up by x, right? One to one to one. Okay, so this is the change that we'll see. And finally, here is what we're going to have at equilibrium. We're going to have the initial concentration of formic acid minus x, and then we're going to essentially have 0 plus x for H plus, and we're going to have 0 plus x for formate. So this gives us the equilibrium concentrations. We're going to be using this to solve for H plus. We can put these equilibrium values into that Ka expression that we came up with earlier. Okay, so this you can kind of see how part two of the question depends a little bit on part one. Okay, now let's plug in our values, okay? At equilibrium, we have H plus, which is X. We have formate, which is also X, so X times X. And on the bottom, we have the concentration of formic acid that we're going to have at equilibrium. Now, just to keep in mind, why are we doing all this? We're doing this because we ultimately want to know X the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. Then we'll be able to figure out what our pH is. So we're doing all of this to solve for the value of X to get H plus to then be able to calculate pH. Things are getting a little cluttered here, so let's get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need, move these equations around, and there we go. Now, we need to solve for X. Like many acid-base equilibrium problems, solving for x can seem pretty complicated at first. To solve an equation like this, we could use the quadratic equation, but that takes a lot of time. Instead, we can take advantage of a shortcut. And we could take advantage of the fact that the Ka value is a very small number. And that means that x is going to be quite small. It's particularly going to be small when compared to the concentration of 0.15 molar here. This is going to be way bigger than x. So for our purposes here, we can assume that for this part of the equation, the value of x is negligible, and we can just drop it, okay? And if we do that, we get this, okay? The x just drops out here. Now, Ka, 
approximately equals x squared divided by 0 0.15. This simplifies the math and it makes the problem a lot easier. And you've probably solved many equilibrium problems like this in class. The AP exam pretty much just expects that you're going to make this assumption as well. And in fact, almost all acid-base equilibrium problems make this, make this assumption. Okay, now just remember, write down any assumptions that you make when you're showing your work so the test grader understands your reasoning and doesn't think that you just forgot this x here, all right? So we want to justify why we're getting rid of it and ending up with this approximation. So we can now rearrange this to solve for the equation, to solve the equation, all right? So we will multiply both sides by 0 0.15 and we'll get x squared equals ka times that. Now, we want to get rid of x squared, so we'll take the square root of both sides. That gives us x equals the square root of this expression here. And now we have the ka. Well, that's pretty easy. We can just plug this value in for the ka. We get that times that. Put this whole thing into a calculator round to two significant figures, and that gives us 0 0.0052 molar. Okay, that is the value of x. Now remember what we were solving for. The value of x is the concentration of H plus or the concentration of hydronium. So now we can take this and we can put it into our pH equation. There, we put this in for H plus, and when we do this math, the negative log of the H plus concentration, there is our pH value, 2.3. Okay, now here is the third part. To create a buffer solution, sodium formate can be added to formic acid. How many moles of sodium formate would need to be added to 250 milliliters of a 0 0.10 molar formic acid solution to create a buffer with a pH of 3.90, okay? Buffer, this is a buffer problem. We're gonna be adding sodium formate to formic acid to create a buffer with a pH of 3.90. Now, like many buffer problems on the AP Chem exam, we're gonna solve it by using the henderson hasselbach equation. And that's one of the equations that's given to you on the formula sheet. And here's what it tells you, okay? It says that the pH of a buffered solution is equal to the pKa of the acid plus the log of the conjugate base divided by, or I should say, the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. And remember, for this problem, a minus is the formate ion, H plus is formic acid. So we can swap those in right now, formate and formic acid. Now, what do we know here? What are we, what are we gonna be solving for? All right, we know the pH and we can find the pKa from the Ka. And we also know the concentration of formic acid. All right, that's right here. So the only unknown then is the concentration of the formate ion. Essentially, all of this formate ion is gonna be coming from the sodium formate that we're adding here. So once we find this, we can then figure out how many moles of sodium formate uh, we're gonna to need to add to achieve this concentration. Okay, there's a couple ways that we could rearrange this equation to solve for formate, and they're all equally valid. You can rearrange this equation however you like. We're gonna take it slow, we're gonna step by step here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract pKa from both sides, and then we'll just like flip the equation here to make it a little easier. So we get log formate divided by formic acid equals pH minus pKa. Okay, and right away we can plug in a couple knowns. We know that the concentration of formic acid is this, and 
we know that the pH of the buffer is 3.90. So we can go ahead and we can plug those values in. There they are. Now, what about the pKa here? We have to calculate that. But we can calculate it pretty easily from the Ka because pKa equals the negative log of the Ka. So there's our Ka. When we do this math, we get 3.75. Stick it up there. And now this is relatively simple subtraction, 0.15. Okay, we can clean this up just a little bit. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. And then really, the only thing that we're worried about right now is the fact that this equals 0.15. There we go. Now I'll just move it up. Okay, now remember, we're solving for formate here. We want to get rid of this log function. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, when we say log, we really mean log base 10. So to get rid of the log function, we take both sides of the equation and we place them as exponents on 10. All right. When we do that, it removes a log function from this side. 10 raised to the log of something is just the something. Okay. And then over here, we have 10 raised to this side of the equation. So that's how we undid the log function. All right. And now it's going to be relatively simple math to solve for formate. Okay. We can just multiply this value by this value. There it is. Solve for formate. Do some math. 0 0.14 molar. Okay. So our concentration of formate is 0 0.14 molar. But now we have to finish the problem. How many moles of sodium formate must be added to a 250 milliliter solution to achieve this concentration? Let's clear the slate again and list our knowns. Okay, the concentration of formate is this. We just solved for it. And our volume is 250 milliliters. So we're going to use the molarity equation to finish this up. Molarity equals moles divided by liters of solution. Remember, it requires liters of solution, and the problem gives us milliliters, so you have to convert. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter, so you either divide this by a thousand, or you just move the decimal place over three spots to the left in your head. So, 250 milliliters equals 0 0.25 liters. Liters down there. We can rearrange that equation. Moles equals molarity times liters. And we can solve for moles plugging in these values. Molarity up here, liters up here. And this is the number of moles of sodium formate that must be added to create this buffer solution with a final pH of 3.90. Okay. Now, before we move on, notice how part C here did not depend on parts A and B on the earlier part. So even if you mess something up at earlier stages as you're working through one of these multi-step problems, don't worry about it. Just keep moving on. Remember, show your work and detail your thinking. So here we've seen how to tackle some of the most common acid-base equilibrium problems, the AP test is going to ask you. If you want to get a good score on the test, try to work through as many example problems as you can, and you'll begin to see that there are patterns and there are specific types of questions that they tend to ask. And being familiar with these is really going to help you be comfortable on test day. Good luck.